This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hey, welcome to the program. I've been waiting for you, and today we're going to return to our teaching, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. And today we're going to see that when God launches you, you've got to stay on track. You've got to stay on track. Many people start out right, but then they get off track and they mess up. Well, if you've messed up, you need to come back and get on track. And that's what we're going to see today, and I'm going to help you see how to get back on track. But I want you to order the entire series, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Please order this. It's 15 parts. It comes in all kinds of formats. You'll see that when you go online or when you give us a call. And the subtitle says, Positioning Yourself to Live in God's Supernatural Power, Provision, and Protection. If you want to live in those, you got to be in the will of God because when you're in the will of God, that is when all these things are activated. You know, I did a series called the 91st Psalm. If you don't have it, you ought to get it. And it talks about what belongs to you when you live in the shadow of the Almighty. When you're in the shadow of the Almighty, you're living in the will of God. And when you're in the will of God, all the promises of Psalm 91, which includes power, provision, and protection, they belong to you. My friends, all of that is yours when you get in the will of God. It doesn't mean you're never going to have problems, but it means you're going to have supernatural power to deal with them, supernatural provision, and supernatural protection. And my life is a testimony of that. But please order this by going online or giving us a call. And remember that it comes with a study guide. And my friends, this study guide is enormous. This one is 95 pages. That's a lot of material And I want you to enjoy this because we worked hard in it. It has a synopsis of every program, the topic, the Greek words, the scriptures, the points, everything in the program. It's all right here because we want to put a meal on the table for you. We want this teaching to really get inside you. And we want you to have the book by the same title, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. When I wrote this book, It was so powerful for me as I began to analyze the will of God and really digest what the Apostle Paul went through. I could see it operative in my own life and begin to think about how it could operate in the lives of others. And the back of the book says, are you ready for a life filled with adventure? That's what I want you to happen. And when you begin to do the will of God, adventure is released and it is so exciting. Let me tell you, if you feel like you're living in a black and white world, it disappears when you step into the will of God. Everything becomes full color. So please order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. And when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you because at Renner Ministries, we're praying people and we would count it a privilege to pray for you. It doesn't matter what the need is. You let us know, you call us or you send us an email and we'll put our faith out there with you and God will do something wonderful for you. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Today we're going to see that when God launches you, you need to stay on track. But first I want to tell you one thing about our ministry you may not know, and that is our ministry to people who need drug rehabilitation. We have a massive ministry in Moscow right here that helps people who have had some kind of addiction in their life. And my friends, we have been ministering to these people for years and years and years, and the success rate in our drug rehab ministry is just off the charts. And that's because we don't just give them psychology, we get them in the Bible, We get them filled with the Holy Spirit. We teach them how to walk in victory. And today, so many of them are set free. They're married. They've got families. They're serving in the church. In fact, right now, we're producing a whole movie about one of their testimonies because it is just so dramatic what God has done in that person's life. But he's just one of many. And because of the giving of our partners, we are able to do this very important ministry for people who've had some kind of addictions. I'm talking about our drug rehabilitation ministry, which we really believe in. This is really the ministry of Jesus. And if you're a partner, what we're doing in this particular respect is partly due to you. It's because of your giving. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, partner. And if you're not a partner yet, please pray about becoming a partner and help us do the work of the ministry. 
And when you become a part of the partner family, we're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. The subtitle says How to Survive, Thrive, and Overcome in the Midst of Difficult Situations. And we're going to send you my wife's book, Denise. And the name of that book is The Gift of Forgiveness. These two books we think are so important that we want every partner to have them. But reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program. And today we're going to see that when God launches you, you need to stay on track. Now, in Acts chapter 26, we've already seen that when the Apostle Paul stood before King Agrippa and gave Agrippa his testimony, he tells us something about his conversion that was not recorded over in Acts chapter 9. He tells us what Jesus said to him when he looked up and he saw Jesus standing in that cloud of glory. And when you come to Acts chapter 26, verses 16 to 17, Paul says he heard Jesus say, rise, stand upon thy feet. I really like that because Jesus never wants anybody to stay down. He's always saying, get up, stand up, rise, stand on your feet. He's saying that to you too. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. So from the very moment of his conversion, he finds out God has a plan for his life. And then Jesus adds, to make thee a minister. So first of all, he finds out he's called into the ministry. He finds that out the moment that he's saved and not just called to the ministry and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, which means he's going to have a ministry of supernatural revelation he knows now in the moment of his salvation, he's seen Jesus now. He's going to see Jesus again and again and again. It's a ministry of divine revelation. And then he says, delivering thee from the people and from the, listen, Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. The word send is the Greek word apostolos. It's where you get the word for an apostle. So in the moment of his salvation, can you imagine? He hears from God that he's a minister, okay? Just a few moments ago, I was killing Christians. Now I am a Christian minister. Number two, I'm not just a minister, but God has given to me a ministry of divine revelation. Number three, he's delivering me from the people. That's really from the children of Israel and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. God is gonna send me as an apostle to the Gentiles. Ay, ay, ay. yay. So from the outset of his conversion, God's will was revealed to him. God did not want Paul or you or any of us to struggle for years and years and years and say, well, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what is the will of God for my life. So God fixed it. That when the Holy Spirit came into you at your conversion, when he came into Paul, that's what we're reading, he brought the mind of God, the will of God, the DNA of God, the blueprint of God for your life. All of that is in the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God came into you, you got the whole package, which means God's plan for your life is not out here floating in the atmosphere. It's inside you. And that's why you need to pray in tongues. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that when you pray in tongues, you speak divine mysteries. You literally begin to release the will of God that is in you up into your head so that you begin to perceive it and understand it. That's what happens when you pray in the Spirit or when you pray in tongues. And if you don't pray in tongues yet, call us. We will pray with you today and you'll be filled with the Spirit and you will begin to pray in tongues and release those divine mysteries and you'll begin to perceive God's will for your life. But Paul, the moment he called Jesus Lord, got the will of God in his heart. Spirit of God entered into him, just like the Spirit of God entered into you. And that plan was deep inside him. Now, he needed a confirmation. And so he sent Ananias. We covered this in the last program. Ananias was a disciple who was obedient. And Jesus knew that Ananias would be obedient, so he gave him an assignment. He said, I want you to go to Saul of Tarsus. He's on Straight Street. You'll find him there. He's waiting for you. I've already told Saul of Tarsus someone's coming to see him whose name is Ananias. Wow, this is amazing divine communication. And God says to Ananias, here's what you are to tell him. Acts 9, 15. You're a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name, number one, foremost, above everything else, to the Gentiles. Number two, in the order of priorities, is to the kings. Number three, in the order of priorities, third, last, if you've got time to do it, to the children of Israel. So God's order of 
priorities for Paul was threefold. First and foremost, first and foremost, he was called to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Second, he was to bear witness about Jesus before kings and to governmental authorities. And third, he was called to be a witness to the children of Israel, but this was the last on the list in terms of importance. His chief primary call was to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And when Paul heard that Jesus was sending him to the Gentiles, it must have been an overwhelming blow to him mentally and emotionally because he'd been raised to loathe Gentiles. And then when you come to Acts 9, verse 6, we have seen the Bible says, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. You know, God doesn't always tell us everything all at once. It was one step at a time. And sometimes God reveals his plan to you one phase at a time, even though he's placed it in you. He doesn't usually show you the whole picture at once. He opens it to you one step at a time. Well, he had just heard a lot, but now he's to go into the city. Well, he's blind, so he's led by the hand into the city where Ananias shows up. And Ananias is the one who begins to prophesy to him and tell him God's will for his life. Number one is Gentiles. Number two, kings and governmental authorities, last, least of all, the children of Israel. But in those three days while he was waiting for Ananias to show up, he was probably thinking, you've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Uh, you're you're, you're going to send me where? You're going to send me to whom? You're going to send me to, excuse me, to Gentiles? Are you sure you're talking to the right guy? I'm not the guy trained to minister to Gentiles. You know, sometimes... People wrongly say, God will only send you where you're comfortable. Well, if that was true, none of us would be saved today because missionaries went where it was not comfortable. God called my family from where it was comfortable to the Soviet Union. My friends, the will of God often leads us to some very interesting places. And when Paul heard that he was going to be the apostle to the Gentiles, I'm sure he said, Gentiles, Gentiles, you've got to be kidding, Gentiles. And that was why he needed a confirming word. So as I've told you, Ananias shows up and you read about Ananias in Acts chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. And the Lord said to Ananias, arise and go into the street, which is called straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Well, Ananias had heard this horrible reputation about Saul of Tarsus. So he said, Lord, are you really sure? And that's what we read in Acts 9, 15 to 17. The Lord said, go thy way. It's okay. Yes, this is me. I'm telling you to do this. Don't be afraid. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles first, secondarily kings, third before the children of Israel. And Ananias did what he was instructed to do. He came into the house and lo and behold, just as he had heard, there was a blind man a man named Saul of Tarsus, he came and he said, Saul, brother, Saul, the Lord, even Jesus sent me to lay my hands on you, that you could be healed, that you could be filled with the Holy Spirit. And here's a prophetic word. God has called you as the apostle to the Gentiles, number one. Number two, you're to speak to kings and to those in authority. And number three, if you've got time to do it, you're to minister to the children of Israel. But number one, chief above all else, you are to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Well, now here Saul was sitting in that house saying, Lord, are you sure? You've got to give me a confirmation. Lord, you've got to show me again. Is this really you that has spoken to me? And a man shows up that he doesn't know who speaks verbatim what Jesus had said to him privately. And I want to tell you that often when you have been told by the Lord to do something new, drastic, or different, and you say, Lord, I need a confirming word, God will do that for you. He'll send somebody to prophesy to you, to give you a word of knowledge, or to say, hey, I was praying the Lord told me this about you. God will send you a confirming word because you need it. And that's what he did for Saul of Tarsus, who later became known as the great apostle Paul. But Paul knew from the very outset that he was called to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And he wrote about it multiple times in his epistles. For example, in Romans 1, 5, he wrote, By whom we have received grace and apostleship 
for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. The word nations here is the word Gentiles. In Romans 1, 13 to 14, Paul writes, Now I would not have you ignorant brethren that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. There it is. And I'm debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. That's Gentiles, Gentiles, Gentiles. Then you come to Galatians 1, verse 16. He says, God's purpose was to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. That word heathen is the word Gentiles. Then you come to Galatians chapter 2, verses 7 to 8, and Paul writes, The gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, and the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship to the circumcision the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Well, of course, the Gentiles were uncircumcised. The Jews were circumcised. So when Paul writes that Peter had a ministry to the circumcision, that's to the Jews. When Paul writes that he had a ministry to the uncircumcised, that's to the Gentiles. So over and over and over and over and over again, he says, Gentiles, 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 Gentiles. But yet, when you study the record in the book of Acts, you find that when his ministry first launched, even though he was sent to be the apostle to the Gentiles, he got off track. He did not go to the Gentiles first. Instead, he reversed the order. <laughs> it's hilarious what we do. He reversed the order of priority and went to the Jew first. He went to the kings and to those that are in authority second. And last, if he had time, on the way, he might talk to Gentiles. That's why when you read about the first five years of his ministry, when he comes into a city for the first time, the first thing he does is hightail it to a synagogue. He goes to the Jew first, 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 when his greatest ministry is not to the Jew, it is to the Gentile. Why did he keep going to the Jew first? Because he was a Jew inside and out. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was comfortable with Jews. He did not like Gentiles. He recoiled from the thought of ministering to Gentiles. But yet God sent him to the Gentile first. But when you read the record in the first five years, Paul reversed the order of priorities. Everywhere he went, he went to the Jew first. That's not what he was supposed to do. Number two, to rulers and those in governmental positions. And last of all, maybe along the way, somewhere he might speak to the Gentiles. <laughs> and you know what? In those five years, he experienced all kinds of conflict, chaos, turbulation, persecution. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. For example, Acts 13, 15 says, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecutions against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. He had no connection with Jews that was working. Or how about Acts 14, 5 and 6? And when there was an assault made, both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews. The emphasis here is on Jews and with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. And they were aware of it and fled into Lystra and Derby, cities of Iconium. The Jews didn't want to hear one thing that he had to say and they stirred up trouble for him. Or how about Acts chapter 17, verses 10, 13 to 14. Listen to this. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Look at that again. They're going straight to the Jews, even though they're supposed to go to the Gentiles. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached by Paul of Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And the brethren had to send Paul away for his own safety. Again and again and again and again, Paul kept stopping at the synagogue first, even though he was supposed to go first to the Gentiles. And time and time again, he was assaulted. He was beaten. He was imprisoned. He was even stoned. The Jews wanted nothing to do with him and did not want to hear his message. But remarkably, as he was trying to reach the Jews first, it's not what he was supposed to do, if the Gentiles happened to get a whiff of what he was preaching, 
They always said, we want to hear that. We want to hear more of that. He had a divine connection with Gentiles. That's what he was called to, but he didn't want that. He wanted to speak to the Jew because that's where he was comfortable. But the Gentiles, just getting a scent of what he was preaching, said, hey, that's very interesting. Come talk to us. We want to hear you. And he was reaping accidental fruit among the Gentiles and not reaping any fruit among the Jews because he wasn't called to the Jew first. He was called to the Gentile primarily. That's why he was the apostle to the Gentile. And my friends, this is why it is so important that when God launches you, you've got to stay on track. We're out of time, but stay tuned. I've got more to share with you, and I'll be back in just a moment. Someone asked the question, how many people can one angel kill? Well, we read in Isaiah 37, verse 36, that one angel by himself killed 185,000 men. That's a lot of people, but just imagine, Jesus said he could have called 12 legions of angels that were available to him. Well, in one legion, there were 6,000 angels. Well, if one angel can kill 185,000 men. That means that a legion of angels, which is 6,000 angels, could kill 1,110,000,000 men. But Jesus was able to call 12 legions of angels. And if you put it all together, it means 12 legions of angels have the ability to kill 13,320,000,000 men, which is more people than there are people on the face of the earth. My friends, this tells us angels are mighty and powerful and angels are available to help you. Do you hunger to know what God wants to do with your life or what steps to take to fulfill the perfect will of God? Or maybe you need an answer from heaven for a life-changing decision. You can learn to hear from heaven to know God's plan today with Rick Renner's updated teaching series, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Rick answers the hard questions about the often misunderstood subject of hearing God's voice and how you can know His will for your life. He shares from his own life how he discovered the will of God and the bumps he encountered along the way. Titles in this series include Coming to Grips with the Call of God for Your Life, Being in the Right Place at the Right Time, Don't Misinterpret What God Told You, Redirecting and Getting Back on Course. This 15-part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $24. We're also offering Rick's book by the same name, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Rick delves into the journey of the Apostle Paul and other key Bible characters as they sought to walk out God's will for their lives. Along the way in this fascinating process, Rick will reveal vital lessons to help you in your own pursuit to fully align with God's will for your life, which is the key to your lasting success. This book can be yours for only $19. Bundle the series and the book, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Don't miss this special offer. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, where do you think I am right now? This is my old TV set. I used to teach all my programs and come to you from right here in every program, but now, I'm working in the new studio because you helped us to build it, and I want to say thank you. But you may ask, well, what's going to go on in this old studio? This old studio is being transformed into a new TV studio for our new TV network, which is called the Good News Channel. Think about that. God gave us a satellite network and a federal channel in Russia that has the potential to reach into every home. We actually have a federal license which allows us to take the signal of our network into every single home. That is just amazing. And I don't think anyone else has ever received this particular license. Only God could open a door that big. Wow. And now we're renovating the old studio. We're going to completely change it. And from this space, we're going to begin filming new daily TV programs for the new satellite network and the new federal channel, which is called the Good News Channel. The gospel is such good news, and we need to take it into every home. And if you're already a part of the giving team, thank you so much for being a partner. 
And if you're not a part of the giving team yet, please pray about being part of the giving team to help us renovate this studio and to develop our new channel so we can take it into every home of Russia and not just Russia, but around the world to wherever there are Russian speakers. They need the Word of God. And together with you, we can take them the light that will transform their lives. And I want to say thank you now for being a part of our giving team. Well, in today's program, we've seen the importance of when God launches you that you stay on track. Don't get off track. When you get off track, it creates troubles for you. And my friend, if you've gotten off track with the will of God, you can get back on track. We're going to talk more about that in tomorrow's program. But I want you to have the entire series, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. The subtitle says, Positioning Yourself to Live in God's Supernatural Power, Provision, and Protection. It is 15 parts. It comes in all kinds of formats. And it comes with a study guide that is wonderful. And I want you to have the book by the same title. The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Please order this. You will devour this book. And by the way, this is a book that you should order several of because it is certain you're going to want to share this with somebody else that's trying to find the will of God for their life. Everybody wants to be successful. Well, you become successful when you get in the will of God. It's knowing the will of God and doing the will of God. It's being in the will of God that produces success. But I want to pray for you. And by the way, if you need prayer, you reach out to us right now or send us an email and we'll pray with you on the phone or the moment we get your email. But Lord, we thank you that you've got a plan for every one of our lives. And once you reveal it, you want us to stay on track. If any of us have gotten off track, I pray for us to get back on track. I especially pray that for my precious friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.